<laughs> Buenos dias, mucho gusto. Me llamo Luisa Mesones. In 2009, I became chronically ill and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. My speech slurred, my senses were coming up backward. I forgot how to spell correctly and I couldn't remember anything. My whole body hurt, it hurt to walk, and I didn't want to leave my apartment. I could feel depression set in, but I didn't let it stay, and I prayed it away. I was devastated. I could have done so much more with my intelligence. I could have done so much more. So little by little, I pushed myself to research my chronic condition and I became even more diligent about it when three months later, I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. How did I get so sick? I started researching. I started attending classes and workshops at the recreation center. And I started looking for resources that would help me medically and financially. Took a little bit, but gradually, my new normal, my new health, was an adjustment I got used to. And my intelligence started coming back and my map to communicate. So I knew I had to take advantage of it. And I decided that I was gonna take one class, one French, one French refresher, one semester, just to freshen up what I had learned 44 years earlier. So I told my children that I was gonna take a class. My son Michael said, so mom, What's the degree going to be in? I said, no, Bobby. It's just one semester. It's just one class. Michael smiled and said, sure, Mom. My daughter, Amanda, who was sitting next to me, said, scoot over, querida. Let me see what majors they have. Let me see what they offer. And she chose communications because she knew I would excel, and she knows how I love to talk. <laughs> My son, Chris, pulled out his cell phone. I said, I know exactly the counselor that is going to help you. Hello, Belen. Hi. My mom is going back to school. <laughs> so, the first day of my French class, my professor walked in, speaking in French, and I was dazzled. And I knew I had to take everything French that the college had to offer. So my academic counselor de developed an educa education plan for me that I carried everywhere. And now I find myself researching resources again, different from when I was sick, but still for financial assistance, for any kind of aid. And I started finding resources. So my first place that I went to, I marched in to get my free pencil, and I walked out with computer tools, meal vouchers, and school supplies. But still, I was a little uncertain about going back to school. So at my first English class with my professor, David Cowper, I shared with him, I said, I don't know, I only have a high school education. I don't know what I can contribute. He's like, are you kidding? Your lived experiences are going to excel academically. Luisa, why be a good student when you can become a great scholar? So my pursuit of higher education continued. Um, in my first ever psychology course, first one college course, I was sitting in class and my instructor was going to talk about the parts of the brain. And the part that he was going to speak about was the hippocampus. <laughs> I giggled, I put my head down and I thought, silly professor, why is he going to speak about a hippopotamus during lecture? <laughs> I looked at my book, I looked at the spelling, I looked at the board, and I looked at his handwritten example and realized that I did not know what that word meant. I had never heard it before. And little tears of shame came down my cheek because I realized how little I knew. Once my embarrassment passed, I smiled because I thought, I'm going to put my hippocampus to a lot of really good use, and I'm going to learn a lot of information. A second unknown that happened. I was sitting in my ethnic, course, ethnic studies courses with Dr. Juana Mora. And Dr. Mora started speaking about Black Wall Street. 
Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was a mecca created by African Americans. And on May 31st of 1921, a mob of, a mob of white looters and rioters burned down schools, businesses, libraries, newspaper offices, and left 300 people dead and 10,000 people homeless. How did I not know about this? Where, how, where had I been all my life that I did not know about these events? And this time, my tears were of anger, anger that I didn't know and anger that I was not informed. So I knew that I wanted to turn those ears from anger to passion, to knowledge, to college degrees. <laughs> so what was that first, what turned out to be that first French Semester, that one turned out into four associate degrees, three with general emphasis in human arts and expression, social sciences, and social behavior and self-development. And that fourth degree, the one that my daughter picked for me, allowed me to apply to the UCs. Huh. I got into eight of the nine universities that I applied to. And when UC Berkeley said yes, with free tuition, I knew I had to go. I moved away from my family, my home, and everything that was familiar to me. And during that six hour drive, that fear of the unknown really set in. I knew no one at Berkeley. ¿Y ahora qué hago? No conozco a nadie. ¿A dónde voy a vivir? ¿Qué voy a hacer? What am I going to do? So I Googled my address so I knew where to live because I get lost everywhere I go. And then I, I looked through my, my syllabus for any resource, any, any clue that would help with my transition. And I realized that one of my instructors' name was Luisa, like me, but with the last name of Giulia Netti, an Italian from Sicily. Took my shot, I called her number, and it went to voicemail. I must have spoken a thousand miles a minute during that message, but she called me back, and to this day, she's still just a phone call away. So my first course at Berkeley was July of 2019, and it was Intro to Linguistics. That was such a hard course. I was the outlier. Most of my peers were 30 to 40 years younger than I was. And I was struggling in this class, office hours every day. And my instructor announced that we were having Saturday study groups. And I thought, me? <laughs> in a study group with these younger peers at Berkeley? <laughs> and so I remember thinking, I, what can I do to make this more cohesive and enjoyable? And I remember that the basic needs food pantry had peanut butter and white bread and wheat bread, and I thought, I'll just go to the store and buy some squeeze top jelly, and we can have PBJ sandwiches. So it wasn't long before we started laughing, studying, collaborating, and we went for the top grade in the class. During finals of that course, I was pretty much the last one to finish, and as I was leaving, my instructor stopped me and said, wait, the group wants to see you. So when I was waiting for it, they were waiting for me because they wanted to go out for Thai and they wanted to celebrate with me. And it was a very touching picture because they didn't have to wait. They had been more than finished, but they waited for me and we celebrated. Well, I did continue celebrating and in May of 2021, I graduated summa cum laude <laughs> from the top ethnic studies program in the nation. I was selected to the Honor Society of Phi Beta Kappa, and I spoke, I was one of the speakers, proud graduate of the 2021 UC Berkeley Chicken X Latinx graduation. Please note in the picture, the purple dinosaur and the blue dinosaur, and the fifth grade student council president. So, why, why is this important? Why does this matter? I'll tell you why. 
Older adults have so much to give back to higher education. We have the wisdom, the commitment, the work ethic. We phrase and educated families. And we were intelligent long before the internet happened. And we, <laughs> and we were ready to give back. And the, the universities are not quite ready to accommodate us. And I'll give you a couple of brief examples. I went to a mixer with my daughter for one of the universities. But everyone that approached her, approached us thought she was a student. And after a while, she was just like, doesn't matter what I say, they're going to see me. And I said, well, there are activities. Well, the activities meant that one of the activities was that you ran around the room, you slammed yourself against the wall, and you caught safe to claim your spot. And I thought, <laughs> my knees and my hips running? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so I said, I'll go to the outreach tables. And they're like, oh, who's your, who's your grandchild? Who is your child? What are they going to major in? So I went home from a disappointing event, feeling a bit deflated and old. There was another instance where I wanted to go in a classroom, but how do you fold yourself up to sit for a two-hour lecture if the desk and the chair are connected? You can't. So these are things that the universities need to think about to accommodate us older students, because if they don't accommodate us, we miss out because we can't share of our wisdom with the younger adults. And the younger adults miss out because they don't gain from our support and our love and admiration. College posters have to be different because college students are not 18 to 25 years old anymore. That's not what they look like anymore. They look like me. <laughs> so, society will make you think that after a certain age, you're too old to be in school. Had I listened to that, I would have not taken that French class. I would have not been able to sit in my classrooms with my peers and be electrified by their intelligence. They're so intelligent. Our youth is so intelligent. I wouldn't have had a chance to tell them how much I admire them, their courage, their tenacity, and their, 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 and their push to move forward past obstacles, struggles, finish school, start school, and move on forward. I would have not had a chance to tell them that I believe in them as much as they believe in me. So, if you have educators that welcome you, if you have professors that elevate you to be better, if you have family that believes in you, and if you have children like mine that think you can do anything, how far will you go? I invite you to shine your intelligence, show your wisdom, laugh out loud, be yourself, bring snacks, <laughs> share of your stories, and pretty soon you will see that age disparity slowly disappear. So see this, think of this, remember this. I believe in you. I am cheering for you. I am in your corner applauding you as you find yourself taking your journey into stepping and navigating into the unknown. Thank you. <laughs>